What's up guys, analyst Ming-Chi Kuo has published an early report on the pre-orders of Apple's latest iPhone generation. Demand for the iPhone 14 Pro Max has surpassed that for the 13 Pro Max last year, so it was rated good. The iPhone 14 Pro got a neutral rating, same demand as 13 Pro, and the other two models got a bad rating. In the end, it seems to be a wash for Apple in terms of total numbers, but this shift towards the high-end models will lead to a higher average selling price. Overall, the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus account for 45% of shipments of the iPhone 14 series. Interestingly, based on Kua's data, demand for the new Plus model is weaker than even the iPhone 13 mini saw last year. You know, the mini that was killed off because of weak demand. The Plus is also doing worse than this year's iPhone SE, apparently. If the weak demand for the two vanilla models hold, Apple is expected to reduce their shipping targets for them in the coming weeks. Whether it increases the target for the two Pro models will depend on how long the inrush of pre-orders for them lasts. Note that this data is estimated based on wait times for new iPhone 14 models in several major markets. 6 weeks for the Pro Max, 5 for the Pro, while the other two will be in stock come launch day. A few weeks ago, Kua published a similar report based on offline pre-orders in China. There the two Pro models made up 85% of pre-orders and the Plus less than 5%. The iPhone 14 series hasn't even properly gone on sale yet. It is now accepting pre-orders. The first sales are scheduled to start on Friday, September 16. The Plus will go on sale later, next month. But so far things are not looking good for the iPhone 14 Plus. As for the Pros, Kua writes, No doubt the pre-order result for Pro models proves again that Apple still has numerous loyal and sticky customers amid the deteriorating economy, but it doesn't mean Apple will increase orders for Pro models at once. Apple's new iPhone 14 series has the same design and overall dimensions as the 2021 series. So, this shouldn't come as a surprise, but the battery capacities are roughly the same too. There are minor differences, though probably not enough to have a measurable impact on battery life. What's different this year is that there are now two models with a large battery, the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the cheaper iPhone 14 Plus. Their batteries are a tiny bit smaller than the 13 Pro Max battery, but again, it is a negligible difference. The batteries of the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro are slightly bigger, but only by a few percent. Like last year, the vanilla model has a bigger battery than the Pro, but this year they have different chipsets too, and different screens of course. So it will be interesting to compare their battery lives. Apple claims that the Plus has the best battery life out of any iPhone so far. Also, the Pro models retain their all-day battery life promise despite the new always-on display function. As for charging, Apple didn't announce official numbers, but regulatory filings suggest that nothing has changed. The 3C list 29 was for one of the models, which should be practically the same as the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is unofficially rated at 27 watts. Also, Apple never advertises the amount of RAM in phones, but the latest Xcode 14 beta confirmed that all iPhone 14 models get 6GB RAM. This marks the first time since the iPhone 11 series that all new models get the same amount of RAM. Previous rumors suggested that the iPhone 14 Pro series would bring faster LPDDR5 RAM, while the regular 14 models would stick to LPDDR4X RAM, though we don't get any confirmation on this from the new Xcode report. Guys, thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, stay on the channel with us, bye everyone!